Hey guys, welcome back. This is Lei. In this video, I'm going to show you how to download gene expression data from TCGA and GTEx databases programmatically. If you are a cancer researcher, you must have used these two databases extensively. TCGA is a comprehensive database for cancer types, which hosts various data types such as whole genome sequencing data, gene expression, DNA methylation, microarray, protein data, and clinical data across over 30 cancer types and 11,000 tumor samples. The GTEx database complements TCGA by providing corresponding data types that cover 52 non-disease tissues across over 1,000 individuals. Together, these two databases enable cancer researchers to directly compare tumor samples and healthy samples in multiple dimensions. Data downloading and the subsequent data analysis will be performed in R, so our first step is to set up your R environment. Open your R Studio on your laptop and install all the essential packages and load them. The major packages are TCGA BioLinks for downloading gene expression data from TCGA and ReCount3 for downloading gene expression data from GTEx. Other packages for data manipulation, visualization, differential analysis, and gene annotation. Next, let's explore what the datasets TCGA provides. We retrieve the sample information table using the getGDC projects function. This function returns the meta table in this format. You can directly tell what disease type it is from the disease type column or from the project ID column. In the project ID column, all the TCGA datasets start with letters TCGA. So we can subset this meta table by only including TCGA datasets. This line of code means in the project ID column, we only want the entries that start with TCGA dash. This is a subset meta table with all the TCGA datasets included. You can choose to download any of the datasets or all of them in one go. Now let's download gene expression data for breast cancer as an example. First, we create a focused query using the GDC query function. In this function, specify the name of the dataset you want to download. Here, we want TCGA BRCA dataset. Data category, we want transcriptome profiling. Data type, we need gene expression data. Workflow, we want the raw counts, not normalized counts, or FPKM. Sample type, we want primary tumor and solid tissue normal. If you don't know what kind of sample types are there, in the dataset, you don't have to specify it, because the following code will tell you what's inside. The getResults function retrieves the meta information of this dataset. In the return meta table, the sample type column contains the information of the tissue type. In this case, we have primary tumor and solid tissue normal. The GDC download function downloads the actual data to your specified directory on your laptop. However, the downloaded files are not directly usable. You have to read them back to R using GDC prepare function once the downloading is completed. The output of GDC prepare function is a special R object which contains gene information, sample information, and gene expression matrix. Let me show you how to extract information from TCGA data object. We use ASCII function to extract gene expression matrix. Make sure to specify the unstranded argument because we don't care about strandedness for gene expression. Using call data to extract sample information. Using row data function to extract gene information. You can choose to keep protein coding genes only in your expression data, as demonstrated here, but you don't have to. The gene expression matrix extracted by the assay function doesn't contain gene information, but we can add the gene information back to the expression matrix by creating a new expression table using the data.table function and save the final expression table with gene information to your computer. 
This is a format of the gene information table extracted by the raw data function. And this is a sample information table extracted by the code data function. This is the gene expression matrix extracted by the assay function. And you can see there's no information columns in the table. And this is the final gene expression table we made by adding back the gene information table. Downloading gene expression from GTEx database is similar. We use available projects function to retrieve the meta information of the datasets. This function returns a meta table that contains information of all the datasets. In this case, we're only interested in the datasets from GTEx, the tissue types, and organism. So we can subset the entire meta table to display only the relevant columns. Let's download gene expression data for the breast tissue as an example using create RSE menu function. In this function, you have to specify the project name, project home, organism, annotation, and type. This function returns an R object that contains gene information, sample information, and gene expression matrix. Similarly, we use assay function to extract gene expression matrix. Make sure you use the raw counts to download the count table. Use the code data function to retrieve the sample information. And use the raw data function to retrieve the gene information. As in TCGA, you can choose what kind of genes and what kind of samples you want to keep in your dataset by subsetting the R object. You can directly save the R object to your computer, or you can choose to create your own gene expression matrix by including the gene information. Note that the gene expression matrix doesn't contain the gene information as in TCGA gene expression matrix that we showed before. This is the format of the gene information table extracted by the raw data function. This is sample information extracted by the code data function. And this is gene expression matrix extracted by the assay function. And this is the final gene expression matrix we made by including the gene information. Now that we have gene expression data from both tumor and normal samples, we can directly compare the gene expression between the two conditions. Let's start by creating a combined gene expression matrix. First step, read in the R objects from our previous steps. Retrieve the gene expression matrices. Retrieve the sample information. Retrieve the gene information. Reformat the gene IDs by removing the suffix so that the gene IDs match between the two datasets. Create a common gene set. Subset the gene expression matrices by the common gene set. In the TCGA dataset, we only keep the primary tumor samples. After that, we can combine gene expression matrices column-wise using C-bind. That means side by side. Next, we create a sample information table for each dataset and combine them row-wise using R-bind, which means stack them up. You can check the number of samples in the combined sample information table using the table function. Lastly, let's do some QC by removing low expressed genes. This code means we only keep the genes that have the expression value greater than 10 in at least 10% of the samples in the combined gene expression matrix. With the combined gene expression matrix and a sample information table, we are ready to perform differential gene expression analysis. The process is the same as the one I demonstrated in my previous tutorial. You can use Lima, D62, or HR for D analysis. Here, I use Lima. I'll leave a link of my previous D analysis tutorial in the comments section. This is the output of the D analysis you should be already familiar with. So far, everything has gone smoothly, right? But have you noticed anything fishy? Yes, the batch effects. In our experiments, our biological groups and the batches are actually the same, which is completely confounded. That means you have no idea if the gene expression differences are caused by the tumor normal differences, or simply caused by the differences between the two datasets. Is there a solution to it? Well, kind of. 
First, you can use very stringent thresholds to filter your genes. For example, use high LOCKFC and p-value thresholds. Second, check the expression of housekeeping genes. If the housekeeping genes are expressed constantly between the two datasets, you're good. If not, you're in trouble. Lastly, but also costly, validate your results with experiments, if possible. This is all I have for today's tutorial. Subscribe if you like it, and I will see you in the next video.